Well, hello, folks. I'm Melly Little, and this is your daily TA Rep. Well, we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves what happened today, and what might it tell us about the coming days. You know, I do this show four days a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, here from the base of the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Folks, uh, I'm glad you could join me this evening. Uh, we um, actually had a nice bounce again today in the markets. Uh, for those of you who might want to participate in the program, there's multiple ways. You can either live in, live stream, you can just type in on the window over there as you see some of the others are doing. You can email or you can text message. Any of those ways, I'll take your uh, questions, uh, your concerns, whatever they are, and, and try to deal with them, try to offer you some advice if possible. As far as today, what happened? Well, the markets uh, got a nice little bounce up. They gapped up today. Now, the last two days, they had gapped up, and each of those two days, they actually gave back those gains, but that was not the case today. Today, they gap up. They hold the gap. You can see it here on the daily chart. Nice gap up, hold. And not only that, we started pushing over some of the key areas. And what I'm talking about, you know, we've been talking about retest regens. And a retest regen here on the daily for the S&P 500, there was multiple ones. They all came in the same way. And that is, is that they all came in with the same resistance zone that you see here in the red, and it just blew past it all night. So that tells us two things. One, the market in which what we actually already had a signal that that might be the case, that the market is stronger than we thought, or not so much that we thought, it's just that the market was stronger than, say, it should have been. In other words, when you break multiple swing points as we did here, right, as you came into these and you broke all these swing points in one swoop, that should lead you to two to three bars to the downside. Well, we got one, and then we hung for two bars, right, and flipped around, hammer, and like like snag, I told you, you know, that hammer reversal, more than likely, you're going to see that thing extend, and indeed, that is what we got. We got the extension, now we're over it. Now, there's still some other things that still get in the way of this, and if those do come to fold, and we'll talk about those next, you know, this, this in fact would come back in here uh, usually with the next bar. In other words, if you break over it and it's not real, then the next bar you're back in it. And so tomorrow is kind of a key day. It's actually going to be an interesting day in, this, in the sense that it's a slow day. You know, the day before Good Friday, volume is going to taper off. I suspect that uh, it's going to be hard to break these things down. Uh, as a result of that. So at this particular point, you know, S&Ps have done what they needed to do, and that is, is they got back over that retest regen. That puts them back in a range trade. And so now we just have a bigger range. And so this range keeps expanding, and I haven't looked at this closely, but I'm going to try to draw it in here on the fly looks to me about right here is a zone you got another one about right there right and then you got the top one up above it and I'm taking those areas that look to be kind of the defining areas so when I draw these zones you know a lot of times folks are probably wondering okay how do you do this you know I'm just taking those areas where we have the most congestion and saying okay what do those look like right where are they and you can kind of see these a lot of congestion here a lot of congestion there that allows us to take and, and say okay here's the first floor the second floor and the third floor and that's that's something that's very useful to do because then you know where your zones are right now we're in the middle of the second floor okay and and we've we've actually tested the bottom created a bottom zone 
We're back in the middle. We're going to go up here and we're going to try to break out of this one is what it wants to do. And of course, to do that, it has to hold tomorrow and that will be a key day. So it looks to me like three zones. They just widen them out now. And if we take the numbers on these, which would be interesting and useful to do, that low now is 1814, that high is 1880, excuse me, 1897. So there's about an, uh, what is that, uh, 70, 73 point? No, 80, 83 point range now. That's a pretty big range. 83 points on 1800, that's uh, roughly, what, 4% almost? Yeah, a little bit more than that, actually. A little bit more. Anyway, it's pretty big. 4.5%. That's the S&Ps. Let's flip over and take a look at uh, these other markets. And I don't have the ending quotes up here. I was trying to get them up as I was talking. Uh, I forgot about them earlier. It looks like I'm not going to get them up. So uh, I'll just try to run through them by memory. I think the S&Ps, uh, they were up about... Uh, somebody, uh, if somebody has them handy, they can type them in for us. Um, if, if you know, if you want to do that, I just don't have them handy here. So, but we are up a good, good percent. We are up about eight tenths of a percent across the board, and we actually had outperformance today uh, in the Russell. Uh, after hours, we actually had uh, a bad situation in earnings, and we'll talk about those as we go along here. Let's go to the Russell because the Russell has been the best of the signals. Uh, for probably about the last six months, both up and down. And the Russell's coming back up, and this is going to be the guy when I said when I said a while ago that there's still some issues to deal with, this is the one. And the reason for it is the Russell, the NDX, the IXIC, the NASDAQ composite, the broad composite, these have been the weakest of the indexes. S&P and Dow Jones have been the strongest. And so as the Russell comes back in to test, do a retest regen on this bar, this becomes the big test. And, and that test, if, if in fact it gets it and it gets above it here, right, that would be a huge change in the character of this market. But it's, you know, it's got a long run to go to get up there to start with, and then even when it does, it's going to have to break it. So the Russell to me is really on a longer term basis is really the bread and butter you know in terms of deciding black and white is it going to go higher or not and the Russell to me is the one that has to break the cycle uh, to really get this thing started so Russell into the retest regen is into the bar now it's within six bars most of the time that will reach to the other side of the bar now if that is true then, and if I flip back over to the S&P, that says the S&P is going to attack that last significant point, which is the high from April 10th, which was the breakdown bar, right? That was the key bar on the breakdown. That's the bar where if I'm a short seller, I'm going to load up right there. And so as the S&P tries to run up into that area, that's going to be the tough spot, right? Because in a way, you know, another way to look at this uh, to look at this uh, sideways trend here is this area, right? That's kind of the key area. It, well, I actually I drew it wrong. I was talking and wasn't paying attention. Right there, right? That's kind of the key area because that's where you have all the previous highs that failed with the exception of this one. Just like you had all the previous lows here with the exception of one. So these are kind of the outliers this is the bread and butter of what's been going on now since March, right? You had the run up into March, February downtrend over here, right? Run back up in March. Now you've been going sideways for six weeks. Usually six, seven weeks worth of, you know, seven bars, seven to nine bars most of the time on a weekly. That's about seven bars already that's going to probably break one way or the other. And it's already tried to break upside. It's already tried to break the downside. Now you just have this huge range it's trading in. Let's quickly look at the others. The uh, Let's look at the NASDAQ. I don't think there's going to be anything on these that's going to tell us anything. Because here we don't really have test. 
we have the Feb 3 bar will be, will be the first test. That's the bottom of this breakdown bar on April 4th. Uh, that's 41, 18, and 40, 4,000 roughly, 30, uh, yeah, 41, 13, 41, 13 to 18. And we're sitting at uh, 40, 86, so you can get another 30 points out of it. And the NDX probably set up just about the same. Yeah, just about the same. Uh, actually, the NDX is a little bit stronger. The NDX is already up into that. Speaking of the NDX, we had Google come out after hours with its earnings. Uh, Google sells off about 4%. Google's trading back. Let me go get an ending quote on those guys. Uh, Google traded back to 539. And so it traded, this one actually traded right, took away what it did today. And uh, it's mirror image now, Google L. Uh, that one traded back to 5.45, and that one actually traded deeper. So tomorrow, that's going to put pressure on the NDX. It's going to keep the NDX uh, somewhat subdued as a result. The other piece of it is not just Google. The other, the other big weighting type of stock was IBM. IBM. You know, for years now, IBM has manufactured their earnings by buying back their shares. And, and you know, it's eight quarters now of lower earnings, quarter after quarter, but this thing's still sitting up at 200. And that's, that's solely a result of the huge amount of money they keep putting into the stock, buying out shares, taking those out of circulation so that the PE so that they can uh, keep this thing up higher and uh, you know create the artificial demand for it. Uh, 195.40, this one traded back tonight and this also is going to put pressure not on the NASDAQ but it will put pressure on technology which in fact will which, in, uh, which will in effect also bleed over into the NASDAQ. 188.20 is where this one closed so this is back under that big bar. And so this actually, it's funny how they do these things, right? They trade right back to where you would expect them to in terms of the large volume right after hours. So gets under it, right? What are you gonna do? You're gonna come all the way back to this bar. If it gets over it, well, then it's back to the top of this bar. So that's kind of the way IBM lays out. IBM, large, one of the largest weightings in the Dow, uh, that along with uh, AXAP, AXP, which is American Express, which is uh, you know got stuck into the Dow you know six eight months ago. American Express trades up about a percent uh, today. They closed at 87.40 after hours. Looks like the close is uh, 86.90. So they traded down a little bit after hours. So we're not going to get any help probably here, and we're definitely going to get hurt on IBM. So the Dow is going to struggle. And I didn't pull up the Dow, but we can look at the Dow. The Dow was up testing that breakdown bar, and it's not going to get over tomorrow. So, you know, just given from an index and given the after hours earnings, because earnings, you know, you're at a point now where, you know, we know or we expect the economy is going to get better. We know the Fed is going to keep interest rates low forever. We know the Fed's going to taper. Those are all kind of the givens. We have the wild card with Ukraine which is hurting Europe. It's going to make Europe hard. We have a four day, a, a three day weekend and we have the possibility of something happening in Ukraine. It's going to make it hard with the earnings. If the earnings aren't going to power this market higher, what is? Right? Yeah, it's not like the Fed's going to make it. I mean, I guess there is the possibility that we just get a flood of money coming out of China and coming out of uh, maybe Japan again and potentially elsewhere, right? I mean, that, you know, Europe, that could power the market. And if it's not that, it's got to be earnings, right? Or the, and those earnings will be a reflection of the economy to some degree. If the economy really starts hitting on all cylinders, then you're going to get, you know, you're going you're gonna to get the ability to 
get the multiple expansion on higher sales, which have been missing now for five years for most companies. That's the issue, right? And right now, we're a week and a half into earnings, and other than one day of decent earnings, earnings just haven't showed uh, that well. We had uh, some sectors that told us a few things as well. They're coming back in. The breakdown bars, the bars you want to look at is April 11th, right? That was the high volume breakdown bars. You've got stocks coming back, or sectors and stocks, coming back into those bars now. IYT is an example of it. And then you have the strongest sector like XLE that actually got over and broke higher today. You've got others that are trying to get back up and test it. Uh, XLY, for example, is another one that's coming back up. These are the weaker ones. Um, and so if, I, if I'm watching sectors, I'm watching that bar, I'm watching to see is can, bar, can, can we actually get back over it. Once one of these breakdown bars is taken out, not one, but once most sectors break out those takedown bars, right, that's going to be a trend change. So far, it really hasn't happened. We've been doing this drain for a long time on most of these sectors. The issue with that, and the issue that we've talked about, and I'm going to go back to the NASDAQ here, is that test of these lows came on higher volume. And that test, that, that bar that was testing was the Feb 5 bar. If I go to a weekly, that is the swing point on a different time frame. When you have it line up that way, and if you can just kind of, you know, consider the following kind of a situation. What if this just kind of drifts around up here for two or three weeks or whatever, and then eventually comes down and breaks this bar, and potentially even breaks two? It's breaking on multiple time frames, right, after some sort of a consolidation, and maybe this even rises higher. Maybe we get up to 42 or something, and then eventually we roll back over, right? The risk is, is if this market can't work its way back to new highs again, and there's been a lot of damage done, that, you know, we've seen this market repair itself before. This is not the first time we've seen this. But a lot of damage has been done. This time, there's actually things at risk, right? And that hasn't happened in a while. When you were down here setting this swing point low, there were no swing point lows here. You know, the, the risk just wasn't there at the time. You know, now there is, now there's risk. Now we'll see what the market really wants to do. Can it climb back up? The stronger indexes will have to carry it up if it's going to. Uh, to me, the jury's still out on the longer term, which is these weekly charts. The longer, the thing I'll finish with here, in just in a general thought, the longer this thing does this, right, and can't break out and keeps going sideways, the greater the possibility that it's going to eventually break this down, we're going to get a much larger retrace. But that's in the future, it's not right now. Uh, bonds, this is another piece of the story. The bonds continue to work higher. Bonds have broken over multiple swing point highs at this point. So you've got a swing point high here that was broken on the weekly. You have another one over here that was broken on the weekly. If you go to the dailies, there were multiples. Bonds want to trade higher. And the only way I can see bonds continuing to trade higher is because stocks want to trade lower. Bonds want to come back up and do a retest regen on that swing point low up here. And it's been a long time. They'll probably just make it to it at best. They've got a big bar here and a big bar there, but that is the target. And that's still quite a ways away. I could see bonds continuing to work higher here right, as they try to climb up to that area while the market just kind of drifts around. That, to me, would be the most positive thing for the market. In other words, you don't give it up on the market while the bonds go up and do what they got to do. But another option is that the market breaks back down and bonds just shoot on up there. And I don't know that that's going to happen, but that's certainly the thing that you have to keep wondering about as you see these bonds 
working their way higher because the bonds will not back off. I'm going to pull up the daily chart. They're not backing off at all. They just keep they just keep hanging up here and pushing. And that's even after an ABCD extension. Uh, now it looks to me like they're going to try to sit up here and then work their way higher and that tells me it's going to be hard for the market to work that much higher um, if that's the case. Gold. I've got a question that was uh, texted here on gold. So let me let me pop into gold while I'm doing this, and let me see what the question was. So, the question is about GDX. Uh, what do they want to know here? Okay, the question is is if is is the move in GDX about done to the downside? He's long dust. All right, so here's let's take tackle gold first, and then we'll go to the GDX. So gold got a bounce. And gold gold's gonna struggle. Gold looks to me like it's gonna fail going back into this gap. And if that's the case, that's going to continue to put pressure on the miners. Let's go to the miners now. And then the other thing that's putting pressure on the miners, no, this is going to try to trade lower again. It's going to still try to test this low. 2348. Yeah, it's still going to try to test into this low, uh, is the way this is set up. Um, so that's the answer, I think, to your question. Uh, if, if you're trying to protect your dust position, I simply wouldn't let it trade very much into this gap. You know, more than likely you're going to see it pull back and you're going to see it go after this low. And if it can break that low, that's going to be multiple swing points potentially and that could extend again ABCD structure to the downside on gold. Right? You would have, uh, this one's not that large, uh, but that is you know that's enough to take it down here and go after these guys and if we put that back on the weekly I don't think that's anything on the weekly though let's go look at it real quick yeah it actually would be ABCD structure on the weekly I had another question emailed to me so let me take a minute and, and address that as well the question was is how do you come up with these how do you you being me how do I come up with these ABCD structures okay so the basic form of an ABCD structure, and I'm different in two ways than everything that you'll read out there, but the basic form is, is you do something like this, right? This, this is your A, uh, let me get my pencil, this is your A point, right? This is your B point when it, when it makes a low, this is your C point, and this is your D point, right? And this usually is about a one-to-one -one extension most of the time. So whatever the length of this is, is usually about the length of that. So that's the basic form of what it is. The other thing, the other thing that I do that's different, and most of the time it doesn't matter that much. For example, when I'm looking at this, it's not going to matter. And that is, is that I do, I, I do a, um, I, I want to take the percentages, not the absolute numbers. So if I see a percentage loss here of 0.6, I want to extend that 0.6. And that becomes important when you're doing uh, large ABCD structures because a lot of times, you know, something can go from $3 to 6, that's a 100% move, right? Where the, where the retrace, you know, and, and the move back up, 100% is a lot different than three more bucks. So. Anyway, that's that's one difference I do. But when I'm eyeballing it here, I don't I'm not that you know I'm not that set on it. Uh, when I give you absolute numbers from my spreadsheets, that is what I'm doing is it's the percentage moves. The other thing I do that's very different is is I want to see, and this is a good case of it. I want to see an A to a B, and so in this particular case grab my pencil here. I want to see an A point, which is some sort of a, you know, peak, down to some, some low. And then I want to see a subsequent move back up that gets over that low's high 
and has a higher low. So in this case, this bar does that. This one didn't, but this one does. That gives me a B point if, it, if that's the highest it gets. If it got higher, then it would be higher. And now I can project. And then I'm looking for the break of that low. That gives you the extension. That's how you measure the extension. So um, to answer that question that was emailed, and thanks for asking, that is, to me, the key of setting this up. So example, if I go on an ABCD structure up, this is the B point. This low is slightly lower than that one. It gets me a B, and then I can extend it. And you can see that went almost to that price point. Now, a lot of times, they won't give you that. This one did. You know, for example, here we got one, right? And you can see the extension was almost uh, exactly what it should be. Uh, but on the way down here, for example, none, so, some folks would, actually this one did. Here's, a, here's an ABCD structure to the downside. And they, they appear all the time, folks. And once you get one, then you just simply look for the next one. There's one down, and that one actually extended farther than it should. And sometimes they'll do it. So that's the ABCD structure. I forget how I got to that. Oh, I was looking for the ABCD structure here. So you have one setting up. Let's see how far it goes. Uh, that would take us down to about there. So it would take us down to test those lows again. Uh, that would be a pretty big, pretty big move. But I think on a weekly basis, you know, that's not out of the question. It can certainly do that. The other thing is happening in gold stocks right now, and there was one that got hit real hard today. It was a Nico Eagle. And the reason for it is they teamed up to try to take over this other company, other gold stock, and uh, they just got hammered as a result of it. So a Nico Eagle is, you know, it takes out all these swing point lows. You know, this thing's dead in the water, high volume, blowout. And it's going to take months to repair. Well, why is it? Because it's not appreciative to the earnings. They're taking over a company that's not making any money. Yeah, in the future it's going to add to theirs, but in the short term, it's a sell, right? It's, it's, it's taking money away from the company. So long answer there, GDX, yes, that's, that's where it is. Uh, got a quick question over here I need to tackle. BAC seems like it tested the 2.5. Let's look at BAC real quick. So BAC came out with earnings. They got hit today, I believe. And they actually recovered pretty nicely. Big volume, though. Uh, retest regen on BAC seems a 2.5 swing point low. So the retest regen here for me is this low, right? So it would be from here to there. And what I do is I take the last one that, that got broke and I look to the high of it. So it would be to there. Question is, what do you, theoretic, uh, what do, you do theoretically in that situation? Does it matter? It did not fully test the 127 low. Let me get, it, let me get dates here real quick, 127. Um, well, this one, yeah, this one's continuing to test. It's not done yet. It's potentially not done. It doesn't, look, look quickly here before I, I have to leave. It doesn't have to get to the top of that bar, right? Any failure anywhere under that is fine. It's just that when you come back within six bars, many times you will make it all the way up and do a quote-unquote full retest. But it doesn't have to get there. And with the volume that it left today, it may not get there. It is a hammer reversal, but it's on higher volume. That's not what you like to see. This, to me, looks like it's probably already done its retest and is going to try to work lower. So I think that's the answer to that question. And it was doing tests of other lows inside of it, right? And all those are down in that price point. And see, this is that same situation we were looking at the S&P. That is kind of a zone there that gets very hard to get over. So... All right, real quick recap here. Uh, I got digression a lot tonight, so recap. Tomorrow, slow day. You know, they're going to grind this thing sideways probably. Maybe they'll try to peak it a little bit higher, but it's going to be hard given the after hours earnings tonight. Next week, real key is does S&P get back underneath that swing point lows high or that retest regen zone, right? If it does, then then that retest regen is still on. In other words, it breaks back under here. Because, you know, folks, these, these are not absolute numbers. They never are in the market. They're, they're guides. 
you know, that thing, that retest, regen, it went right to it, just got over it. If it comes right back up underneath it, okay, that's, you know, that's a retest and maybe it's going to regenerate lower. So it kind of puts a question mark on the whole thing, right? And the fact that we have weakness elsewhere definitely puts a question mark on it. So from my perspective, this still can regenerate lower, but what it tells us is that more than likely we've got some sort of a range, not a total breakdown yet. And that suggests more sideways stuff, right? More of the sideways stuff for a few more days, weeks, not just here but elsewhere. Maybe that's what's really unfolding. And then we're going to get something, you know, one way or the other. But right now, mixed market has been a mixed market. Had some great trades lately, right? Now you got to wait for the next one. Folks, thanks for joining me. Have a great night. Take care of yourself. Oh, uh, will I have a Thursday show? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, what is today? Wednesday? Yeah, I'll have a show tomorrow. I'll see you then. Have a great night. Take care. See you then. Good night, folks.